Um, what I'm going to do this morning is I've just got two verses that I want to read, and they're verses that we've already heard in our study. The reason for that is because you're here, but I didn't want to continue the study that we've been doing and then have a, a, a gap in it for people who appreciate those things. I just have a couple verses to read. Um, so what I'd like you to do is just read them with me. It's verse 16 that's up there, and then I think we have verse 17 as well, right? Join with me. This is from Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the gospel, for the good news. We thank you that we've heard it. Thank you that we can believe it. Thank you that our lives can be transformed by it. In Christ's name, may we hear that gospel again today. Amen. I heard a story about a, about a minister who was going through a dry spell. And yes, ministers do go through spiritual dry spells, just like some of you go through spiritual dry spells. Some of you, maybe you don't. If you don't, thank God that you don't go through those times. But sometimes it happens that you go through a spiritual dry spell. You feel like you're... Prayers are going nowhere. You're reading the Bible and not really hearing God say a whole lot. People may encourage you with some words, but they kind of ring off. You ever have any of those things happen? Some of us do. Heard of a minister who was going through a spiritual dry spell. And as he was going through the spiritual dry spell, he, he told his counsel that he really didn't know what to preach. It kind of happens sometimes. Didn't know what to preach. And I, I don't know if it was the most sensitive thing in the world or not, but, but uh, an elder just slid a Bible over to him, and he said, just, just preach the word. That, that, that could be taken kind of hard, I suppose, and you could look at it that way, but also it's a reminder that when we are high and dry, when we don't always have the words, when things aren't always exactly the way we hope them to be, and when we're running into rough spots, Remember the word. Turn back to the word. Now, yes, I've been through some spiritual dry spells in my life. Some last short, some last longer, and I thank God when they're gone. But if I go through another dry spell and I get to a spot where I'm wondering what to preach, I know that I have an answer. I can picture this elder pushing the Bible across the table. It was not me. That, I, I, that was not my experience. But I can picture that. But I can just picture myself if I'm going through a spot and say, what do I say? What do I preach? I think I'll just say Romans. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter where my f faith may be, whether it's on the mountaintop or if it's in the valley. I can preach Romans. We've got this tremendous, tremendous letter. And I've given you quotes from different people about it being the greatest letter ever written, the greatest religious document ever written. I've given those quotes to you in the past, and I agree with it 100%. The one thing I could do is simply preach Romans, just turn back to Romans. And then I could think of that, that line. Well, we've already read it. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Now, I've already preached from that in this series, but I remember one time before that I preached that, and I didn't mention what I preached the time before. This was years and years ago, and it wasn't at Cottonwood Church. But I remember one time preaching from that text, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. And I said, the Apostle Paul very emphatically says he is not ashamed of the gospel. But I said in that sermon on that particular day many years ago, but sometimes I am. Have you ever been there? But sometimes I am. I can remember way back to 1984, 
That was a good year. Why was that a good year? Tigers, right? Am I right? Was it 84? The last time the Detroit Tigers won the world championship, right? You know where I was that summer? I was living in Toronto. I was living in Toronto, and Toronto was giving the Tigers a push to win that pennant. And, and, and anyway, we, Tigers are, were in town, and why? We bought tickets to go see the Tigers. How, how the seminarian on a seminarian summer salary had enough money for tickets to the Tigers, I have no idea. But it's called priorities. So anyway... We went, we went to watch the Tigers play the Toronto Blue Jays, and, and it was a tough game going back and forth, and I can't remember who made the hit, but I think it was Sweet Lou Litt uh, Whitaker. He, I think it was Lou. He hit a smack, uh, uh, he didn't hit a home run, but he hit a triple or something, and all of a sudden, you know, even though you're, we're, we're in Toronto land, you know, we're all sitting down, you know, we just stood up and cheered, and thought, uh-oh, uh-oh. But there was like a dozen other people. There were thousands of people around, but a dozen other people around us stood up and cheered too. It was kind of like, look at here, there's even some Tiger fans in the middle of all this. So 98, 99% were cheering the Toronto Blue Jays on, and here are these people had the audacity to stand up and cheer on the Tigers. And we did, and they won. And then they ended up winning the series. That didn't happen there, but sometimes it's just that pressure around you. It's those people around you. There's so many people around who don't think like you, don't act like you, don't talk like you. Sometimes we get a little embarrassed by the gospel. I admitted in that sermon years ago that sometimes I, I, I am not as bold as I should be. And I suppose that some of you have had that same experience too. You've not always been as bold as you could have been or should have been. Sometimes when we talk about this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Mm, sometimes we hide it. We do. But Paul didn't. You know, I, I, I don't think he was ashamed of the gospel ever. He said, um, I am not ashamed of the gospel. And here's the reason. For it's the power of God. Now, when you think of the power of God, you think of a lot of different things. And I think I mentioned this in the sermons that I already preached. When you think about the power of God, sometimes one of the things we think about is God's natural power being revealed in his universe. Maybe you think of the power of God when he spoke at the very beginning and he spoke and it happened and this whole world was created just by the word of his power. Maybe you think of that. Or maybe you take a look at the things that happen, like hurricanes, and sometimes people will say it's, it's a natural disaster. Some people will say it's the power of God, right? It's an act of God. It's the power of God. And we'll see something like a hurricane and see what it does and say that has so much more power than anything that we can imagine. They, I, or I shouldn't say imagine. Anything else that we could ever produce. We couldn't make a hurricane happen. We can't. We don't have that kind of... We think of God's power in those terms. But when the Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God that brings salvation. God's power rescues. And so then you think about it a little bit. I talked about the hurricane, but I, I talked about a scene that I saw. Uh, I think it was the first hurricane, Hurricane Francine, Francis, whatever it was, where, where um, a news reporter was there, and there he is filming the thing, and there's a person talking, and, the, and then they say, oh, there's someone stuck there, and there's someone in their, in their pickup truck, and then the water's coming, and the next thing you know, here's this guy. He wades into the water. He goes up to the truck. He opens the door. He helps this elderly man who's staggering out, and he can barely make it, and he helps him out. Here's this man who uses his power to save someone else. 
And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God that brings salvation to all who believe. Doesn't matter if they're Jew or Gentile. It's true that salvation was of the Jews, and it came to the Jews first. They were the first to hear it. And so Paul would go around to the, to the synagogues and he would preach the good news in the synagogues to primarily Jews. It's true that Peter, first of all, went out preaching to Jewish people. But then God says, this isn't just for the Jews. This is for all kinds of people. This is for Jew and non-Jew. This is for Greek and non-Greek. This is for Roman and non-Roman. Go spread it. And so they did. For it's the power of salvation to all who believe. Your response is faith. It's believing. Because in it, a righteousness of God is revealed. What does that mean? And that's one of the most hard, difficult uh, concepts in the whole book of Romans is the righteousness of God talks about it, I think it's eight times in the book of Romans and only talks about it one other time in the New Testament, calling it the righteousness of God. What does that mean? The righteousness of God is revealed. Or it's put this way, uh, God's righteousness is, is, is made known to us. Or put it this way, God makes us righteous. When the Apostle Paul talks about being made righteous, two thoughts are in mind. Number one, God declares you are righteous. Could you imagine being guilty of a crime and hearing a judge making known to you or the, the person from the jury, guilty? But what if they declared not guilty? It's kind of the idea. It's a legal declaration. God is declaring you are not guilty. You're righteous. And it means something else too. It means that God puts us in right relationship with him. We are made right. We are made his friends. So the Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first, then to the Gentile, because in the gospel, a righteousness of God is being revealed that is from first to last. Now that's the marvelous good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's the summation of Romans, the whole book of Romans. But the startling thing we saw was right after the Apostle Paul says all those